Hi everyone and welcome to a new colour along from Colour with Claire. So today we're going to be colouring this beautiful illustration here. It's by Russian artist Tiana Loft. She's a fairly new artist onto the scene. Her Etsy page only opened at the back end of last year and she doesn't have too many illustrations on there at the moment but she is growing and as you can see her work is stunning. Now many of you all know that recently I've become really into colouring people and mostly in the style of my favourite artist Mario Labudek and this one is very much in the same vein as her style so instantly I knew I'd have to colour this and I thought why not do it as a colour along. Now obviously there's not too much on the page, there's not too much going on. We've got her hair, her skin and her top and that's it really for the main elements. So it's quite a simple one to do but obviously skin can be difficult for some people so I thought we'd use something that's very basic but where you're going to learn how to do hair and skin as well. Now rather than do a sort of boring brown or blonde kind of hair colour, I thought we'd do something a little bit wacky because she looks like she's got a bit of a twinkle in her eye. Now uh, I thought we'd do a bit of a bubblegum pink hair for a change and the colours I've chosen for that out of my Prismacolor pencils are Pomegranate PC9, uh, 195, Magenta PC930, Pink PC929, and rose sorry blush pink pc 928 so that's what we're going to use for her hair and then we'll go down the picture and do the rest as we go along so i'm going to turn it over because i've actually printed out the lighter version so you can get this on etsy it's around three pounds it's not expensive at all and it's a beautiful piece of artwork and you also receive so this is the uh, standard line art then there's a darker one and then there's this very light kind of greyish one and I thought we'd go with this because it's going to show our colours up a little bit more so what I'm going to do is zoom in and then move her down so that you can see the hair and we'll get cracking so just make sure this is straight okay I think it's straight so we'll start off with the darkest of the colours that we've chosen, which is the pomegranate. And we're going to work on this bun here at the top. So using the artist's um, shading and shadows that she's already put in for you, you, that can sort of gauge where you put your darkest colours. So we're starting off with our dark pomegranate. And we're using a flicking motion. Oh, unless your pencil breaks like that. <laughs> we'll sort that out in a bit, no problem. So you use a flicking motion like this. You know I'm really bad for using too much heavy pressure and that's why my pencils break. So flicking motion like this, which should start off heavier at the, at the start of the stroke and then just wisp up. So you sort of start with heavy pressure and then lighten as you do the motion. And that's gonna leave us a nice little fuzzy area for our next color to blend into. We're then gonna go from the top so we're going to follow this around and see where it goes at the top here, it curls round and we're going to do exactly the same thing. This time I'm pulling the strokes towards me and you can turn around your picture if that helps you to do that because sometimes this stroke is really easy because it's where your wrist wants to go but this one not so much. So you can turn your paper around if you want to and use the same stroke but I'm just going to do it like this for now and I'll see how I go. So we've got two really dark areas um, at the top of this, at this particular strand. And that is going to be the darkest colour that we have. And that's going to be the shadow colour. So I've put in some pomegranate there. And I've left a nice, light, hazy edge, just a little touch of colour on the edge for our next colour to blend into, which is this, the magenta. So we start from... There we go, <laughs> broke it again. We start from the midpoint um, of the previous colour. So we don't start right at the edge, we start at the midpoint. Maybe I should zoom this in just slightly more so that you can see what we're doing. Pull her down a little bit. So we've got a really good view there of what we're doing. And then starting from that midpoint, we flick up again. And that really helps to get our colours nice and blended together. So you start from the midpoint and use your flicking motions again and you'll get a really nice blend. <clears throat> so again move on to your next colour which is the pink and do exactly the same thing 
and you see how the pink is actually dragging the previous colour out with it, which is what we want because that is the best way to create a blend. So it's a bit of pink there, and then we have our final colour, which is the blush pink. We're doing exactly the same thing. And I'm going to leave a very slight bit of white in the centre just to maximise that highlight. And you can use your lightest colour, this blush pink, to sort of buff out any areas of harsh lines. So it's almost like a blender. So we've got a really dark pomegranate area going to a very very light blush pink and as you can see the four colours just blend really really well together. You can come back in and do some more layers if you wish. I'm going to leave that for now and continue and then we can come back at the end and see if there's any areas that we want to just adjust um, or darken up. So starting again with the pomegranate and doing exactly the same thing as we just did on that one strip of hair all over this bun. So I hope that you're all well. It's been a long time since I've done a colour along. Um, I did the Halloween one and I think I also did another, I think I did a Mario Labudec one that was um, a girl with a pumpkin as well. So I did a couple of Halloween colour alongs but I didn't speak through them. I did them as kind of text on the screen. So it's really nice to be back sort of speaking to you guys. Now you might have um, been following me on social media lately and noticed that I've been a bit poorly for quite some time now, which is why I haven't really been online as much as I would have liked. And that's because I have been suffering with a chest infection, which started in November. And then, I still have that by the way, and then um, I ended up with a throat infection couple of weeks ago and I've still got that which is why my voice is a little bit croaky um, and a little bit off so hopefully that's not too jarring for you to listen to if I, uh, my voice is a bit croaky. So that's why I've not been on really and um, I have been posting a few little updates about it but I'm sure all of you are sick of hearing about my medical, <laughs> my medical sort of goings on at the moment so I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to talk about that too much but needless to say it's not been a great couple of months health wise I mean it's only little things like I say little things they do affect you quite a bit but things like chest infection and um, constant coughing and then a sore throat um, you know it's not pleasant but it's not the end of the world is it so there I've completed another little section and I'm going to pop some pomegranate just in this area here because it's one of the folds of the bun so even though it's not as long as that, it's still its own section. So we just have to adjust how much colour we're putting down according to how big the section is. So obviously, as I said, I'm going to come in here and sort out any bits that are a bit harsh or what have you. But we just want to get the base down first and see where the colours are going. So yes, I hope everyone else is well. I'd love to hear from you in the comments um, what you've been up to and um, what you've been colouring and if you're going to be colouring this with me because I love it when people actually join the colour along. Um, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but I do love it when um, I see people's progress pictures pop up on social media when they're doing one of my colour alongs because it does make me feel like I'm, you know, helping and, you know, doing something for the benefit of the community if you are all learning from it and actually physically doing it with me. So I really hope that you do join. As I say, this is a Etsy download. It's just over three pounds to buy. I'm not sure what that is in dollars, maybe five dollars. So it's not expensive. You can print it out on whatever paper you want. And colour it with me. So 
So this artist is really up and coming, I think. Um, with artwork like this, how how can she not be? It's it's really stunning. As I say, it's it's kind of on the same level as your Mario Labudek work, which is you know some of my favourite portraiture in the colouring uh, community. So I'm really excited to see what more um, Tiana or Tiana has to bring. Because if this is kind of her first dipping her toes into the water with, with illustrations like this, I'm sure that she's going to have so much really amazing artwork to show us as time goes on. And obviously I will be putting a link for where you can download this and visit her shop on Etsy in the description box below. So if you are sat here thinking, okay, but where do I go and get it? Have a look in the description and you'll see it there. So I may even come back in after this with a slight bit of black on the very, very inner shadows because I really like to try and deepen and maximise the contrast as much as possible. But I'll see at that stage if that's something I still want to do. I think we often change our minds quite a lot about where we're going with the colouring page from one minute to the next. It just depends how it turns out as you go along. So obviously keep your pencils nice and sharp because we do want to um, be able to create this flicking motion of very narrow lines and it's really a lot easier to do that if your pencils are fairly sharp. I know that mine um, snapped off the end but you can see that they're still quite sharp, they're just not pinpoint sharp and you can um, twist your pencil around like you'll see me doing which sort of gives you a, a sharper edge as you colour. So as for news, apart from um, <laughs> obviously me not being too well, um, there's not really a lot that I can tell you about what's been going on. I mean, I could tell you about the house move. So in some of my last live streams um, that I've been doing, I did mention that we were absolutely desperate to move house. And I can't remember if I've done a stream um, since we've moved. I know I've done a stream since we moved, but I don't know if I've spoken about the move or whatever, because I often forget what I've said you know people will tell me something and then I'll ask the exact same question later on down the line and they'll say no I've already told you this <laughs> and I just forget it goes straight out of my head I've got that many things going on um so I can't remember if I've actually mentioned anything about the house move but I'll I'll go for it anyway so yes we were desperate to move house because we were having problems left right and center with um bad bad sort of families on the street, um, we were having things stolen and all sorts of different things and um, also with my youngest son being um, autistic he desperately needed his own bedroom and we only lived in a two bed uh, so him and his brother had to share which was making every single night um, a nightmare basically um, because my youngest with autism is very very hyperactive and he would not let my eldest go to sleep um, and every single night as I say it was just a battle really uh, but now that we've managed to move we he has his own bedroom which he absolutely loves and I was really worried about it for a while because he's never actually slept in his own room on his own since he was little, since he was a baby. So he didn't really know what was going on. You know, once once they're asleep, that's it. They don't know they're on their own. But um, now that he's older and with him having his own room, I didn't know how he was gonna react, but he's done absolutely brilliantly. He loves having his own space. And, um, you know, just as much as his brother does, obviously, because he can go to sleep now at a normal hour. So it's all turned out brilliantly. Now, obviously, there's some teething troubles with um, new houses, as you as there always are when you move. Things are always a bit different, aren't they? Um, random things, you know, um, how fast the bath fills up or how fast the water gets hot or 
you know, just diff just different um, niggles and things. Um, but obviously, you you know, I can't complain at all because it's it's got us um, in a lot better of a position, really, as a family. And also, we're away from, even though we're only around the corner, we're, we're kind of out of the way now because we used to live next to a, um, we call it a jitty. It's like a, a public footpath. And that's where all the... Um, people, teenagers, they'd all congregate smoking weed there, so we couldn't have our back door open. Um, f you know, you couldn't really go out there because you'd just get verbal abuse. You get glass thrown over, so things, bottles, and they'd smash onto our garden and things like that. It was not great, and obviously they'd climb over that and into our garden to steal things. So um, we're in a much, much better position where we are now, so I can't moan at all. But obviously, like I say, there are... Um, pros and cons when you move and we've encountered both so aside from all the pros we realized quite quickly after we moved in the house that we were absolutely riddled with mice and uh, I think I might have spoke about this on one of my live streams but just in case you weren't there um, yes we we found that we had mice and um, we knew this because our dog Rosie our Yorkshire Terrier was going absolutely mental at the tumble dryer and we thought something's behind there so I pulled the tumble dryer out and there was a mouse plain as can be just not giving a crap that I was staring at it didn't care it was just there and you know where there's one mouse there's a family so I knew that we'd have more so I uh, put some traps down and we were catching mice all over so all through the kitchen and all into the extension part of the house which is what I'm sat in right now which is a, a porter cabin that was put onto the back of the house because it was for a previous tenant who was disabled so this porter cabin attachment onto the house has a, um, a toilet and a walk-in shower and that's behind me at the moment um, this porter cabin is absolutely freezing by the way so I am really really cold doing this right now I need to get some heating sorted out um but yes anyway so all the mice were um were in the kitchen and in this um extension so we were doing traps 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 I tried to take my dryer apart so that I could find the nest but I'm pretty sure that they were in the exact part of the dryer the small part of the dryer that I could not get into it, it's um not something you can take apart so basically I just had to keep trapping them until uh, until they were all gone. And so they kept coming out for their food, getting trapped one by one. And as horrible as it sounds, you know, you don't want them running around your kitchen where you're preparing food, especially me, um, a massive sort of germaphobe. They obviously are carriers of disease and, and I didn't want it. Nobody does, do they? So anyway we managed to get rid of them i've still got traps set up everywhere but they've not gone off for a few weeks and weeks now but after christmas you know so uh definitely definitely got rid which i'm glad about and we also filled all the little holes in the wall with um decorators chalk so hopefully no more can actually get in so that was that we had the mice now apart from that um the house itself uh, was in a bit of a state so we're still going through actually decorating the entire house when we moved in it was throughout no flooring and no decorating throughout when I say no decorating the previous tenants had their some of their wallpaper up in some of the rooms um, which obviously isn't to my taste because it's you know everyone's got different tastes but it was also quite badly decorated if you know what I mean they hadn't really taken much time an effort on it you know I'm not judging but um it's just made more work for us to do because I do like you know to have nice decor and things like that being kind of um somebody with mental health issues myself it really sort of gets on top of me when I feel like there's so much to do and I was really I was having panic attacks and um just general anxiety about the amount of things that needed to be done and um the way that the house had left been left in this kind of state so um as i say we're working our way through it at the moment we've pretty much done the living room almost done the dining room and the boys rooms are done they were like the number one priority to get the boys rooms done and they're both done now um and yes like i say we just need to do the kitchen and the landing area the hallway 
this room, which is going to be quite difficult because, as I say, it's a porter cabin and it's not been very well plastered. You know, the plasterboard on the inside of the cabin is not... Um, it's a bit rough, put it that way. And it's same with the plasterboard, uh, the plastering throughout the house, actually. So in the living room, for instance, the plastering on the wall is just horrendous. I mean, who did it? You know, it's <laughs> you think to yourself, how did any, you know, decent plasterer do this? Because it's just, there's just bits all over the walls that are sort of indented and they've obviously been patched up with bits of plaster, but patched up very, very roughly. And you know, even if you paint it, you can you can see this awful roughness of the wall. And um, we thought about putting the very thick um, fresco wallpaper up to hide any imperfections. And I bought some, but it wasn't thick enough, so I put it on, and it was that thin you could just see everything through it anyway. But the really thick stuff is very expensive, and you know, as as I've been sort of saying throughout. It's, it's something that is very overwhelming, not only because there's a, a lot to do, but also because it's so expensive to, to decorate a house and to obviously floor it and carpet it and everything. So there's no flooring in here at the moment. It's bare, bare wood chip panels on the floor at the moment. It's probably not um, contributing... It's probably contributing to how cold it is in here. But... Um, you know, flooring is very expensive, decorating is very expensive, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes motivation, which is something you don't always have when you suffer from depression, um, but then you have the anxiety on top of it saying you should be doing it, so it's a bit of a vicious circle, but we will get there, we've done a fair amount, say that we've only been in here since the middle of November, it was actually Max's birthday that we moved in, uh, my youngest, so he got his own room as a birthday present, <laughs> And, um, yeah, so I'm just trying to be a little bit more chill about it and not worry too much because I know that it will get done. So I'm hoping that this is um, easy to follow. I'm doing exactly the same um, thing that I did on that very first strip of hair. So working through the colours from dark to light and leaving a little bit of white in the middle. So now let me just touch that up slightly. Got pomegranate. Let's do, I'm just doing a bit of a darker area there so it looks like that piece is going underneath another. I'm going to do the same here. I'll come back in and, and mess around with it at the end, like I say. I just can't help myself. So I might just give these a bit of a sharpen, so just watch your ears. <laughs> from that again it's just little teething troubles you know it's um little things like the bathtub is loads smaller than that previous house so me being really tall I'm five foot ten um having a very small bathtub is a bit odd a bit weird it's something you've got to get used to because you get in the bath and you know the water's just not covering you covering you at all um so it would be good if we could get a another bigger bath I don't know if we ever will or it'll be something we just adjust to it probably will to be honest um but other than that you know i really cannot complain you've got people out there homeless you know people out there with nothing so believe me i'm not complaining it's just sometimes when you um look around at the the work that's been done and the the um the state that something's been left in or been done in in the first place you know it's not had much care and attention given to it um, you do have to roll your eyes a bit sometimes, but as I said, definitely not ungrateful. It's absolutely amazing that we have managed to get out of where we were before. It was a much nicer house we were in before. Um, all the plastering was beautiful. Everything was perfect. It was really warm. This house is really cold. Um, so, you know, it, we had to move for the bedroom situation and also f for the, um, the neighbour kind of situation as well that we had with all the the local neighbours so obviously because we've only moved around the corner 
we still see them you know it's not like we never see the same people but because we're not living next to that footpath we're not getting any trouble whatsoever i mean we've been here since mid-november and we've had no trouble at all so what can you say it's just it's a godsend really that we've managed to move and we had been trying for over two years to move so you know it did take a lot of patience and grit to get through that time with everything going off but what else can i tell you apart from that so moved house had christmas obviously christmas in our new house which was lovely i did actually make a prediction at the start of this year that we would be moved by christmas and i was correct uh, i'm not saying i'm a psychic even though i have had a bit of experience in the past with um mediumship <coughs> excuse me there's that chest um so not saying i'm psychic but i did predict that we would be out of there this year and hopefully uh, and obviously sorry we we did so we had christmas that was really nice um moving into the new year really all i can say is that the new year's just been being ill really which is no good for anyone is it <coughs> so just excuse my cough i'm so sorry that it must be really jarring on you to hear that but i really wanted to get back in and do and do another color along so even though my throat is absolutely killing and my chest is wanting to explode every second i'm gonna pers uh, persevere and uh, bear with it So I hope that you like this um, this pink hair that I'm doing here. A bit different. But I think it's a nice effect. It will definitely be uh, nicer when it's completed. And you can see it as a whole rather than this weird sort of bright pink section. Yeah, so I've not really had a lot of chance to do um, much colouring lately. I just finished the Jasmine Beckett Griffith um, <clears throat> Egyptian piece for Colour and Chat with Sammy's Beckett Bonanza Colour Along, which is on my um, social medias if you want to go and have a look. So I finished that, but um, I've been doing a lot of that diamond painting. I've actually finished a big one. It took me um, a couple of months. <coughs> excuse me um so i finished that one it was an elvis one and i've got it framed and it's about to go on the wall when i've finished painting the dining room it looks amazing and i'll definitely be um doing some sort of video about it uh, so uh, that sort of stopped me from doing a bit of coloring for a while but it was nice to have something different you know you can lose your mojo a bit with colouring sometimes and it's nice to have a selection of hobbies. I've also started entering competitions again, um, you know, as and when, not kind of all the time, just bits and bobs. I used to do a lot of competition entries uh, years and years ago and I didn't do too badly. So I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, I can't cross them because I had a pencil in my hand, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, <clears throat> we might win something or but you really to be honest when you're doing competitions you have to be really dedicated and do it kind of day and night and I just haven't got time so I'm just entering a few here and there you know when I can but you've got to be in it to win it haven't you <laughs> so I've gone out of the line a little bit here I'm not fussed you know, you can always sort of extend that bit of hair if you want to uh, to cover that line where you've gone. There we go. You wouldn't know, would you? So that is the bun. <clears throat> I'm going to just come in here with the blush pink. Just soften out that white a little bit around this area here. Because it just seems like it's not as smooth or as blended as this bit. You may not be able to see what I can see on camera, but so there we go. There's the bun, and I'm hoping that you like it so far, and uh, you're sticking with me for this. 
So I'm just going to come here with this little bit of a loop of hair and fill that in. So exactly the same pomegranate, magenta, uh, pink and blush pink. And obviously just um, adjust how far your, your strokes go depending on how big or small the section is so you can fit them all in. And don't forget to use your blush pink as a bit of a blender if you want to. <clears throat> okay so we'll make a start on the crown of the head and I think that this will be one video for hair one video for skin and a final video to finish off the blouse and the coffee cup and whatever else the flower and the butterfly so I don't want it to be um, too long of a video for you so we will split it up into sections now on these bits that sort of come down here and they're loose strands I'm not going to do the top and the bottom bracketing of colours, I'm just going to go dark down to light. So I've put my pomegranate on, I'm coming in with my magenta, just thickened that up a little bit there but that's fine, you can always adjust it. Coming down with the pink and then just on the very tips. We've got the blush pink. So obviously you can use any pencils you wish to do this, but I'm a Prismacolor girl and I feel like um, my best colour alongs are done with the Prismacolors. Don't, that's not to say that I'm not going to do any colour alongs with anything else. I'm thinking about doing an Arteza one because um, that's a budget pencil and everyone seems to be getting them lately and it's really good quality pencil as well. So look out for that coming soon. I've also got a Arteza bundle review and demo to do. So I've got all of the, well a lot of the Arteza materials for watercolour. So I've got the watercolour pencils, the watercolour brush markers and the watercolour paper. And I've also got the normal sketching paper, so for, for coloured pencil. And what else, what else, what else, something else, the fine liners. So we'll see what we can do with fine liners. It's not a medium I often see used in the colouring groups anymore, fine liners. I think when the adult colouring um, sort of phenomenon started, a lot of people were using fine liners and doing very, very detailed pieces of work like Millie Marotta, you know, where you've got your very small gaps to fill in. I don't see a lot of people doing that anymore. I don't see a lot of fine liner work. Um, but obviously everybody's different, we've all got our own preferences. I started off absolutely obsessed with markers, would you believe, um, and I couldn't be doing with pencils, they were too slow a medium for me. And as time's gone by, I've come to appreciate how versatile pencils are, and um, nowadays I struggle with markers. So everyone sort of changes over time, don't they? Everyone discovers new things and picks and chooses different things and what have you so as we've gone along in this colouring journey we've um, we've made a lot of changes and we've sort of grown into the hobby so we know what we like now we started off probably a little bit clueless about things and just wanted to have fun um, colour something in and then for those of us that have stuck around and it's become you know a permanent hobby it has become like an art to us now so um, that's how I feel anyway about it. So here I'm just lengthening some of the strokes here, there and everywhere, making it quite jagged, not uniform at all. So just lengthening them a bit so we've got a, a random sort of look to the edge rather than something very linear. That's what I'm doing here. I'm obviously following the curves of the hair, which you must do. So I'm following the curves that the artist has already put in. Coming in now with the magenta and just lengthening those slightly, those strokes. And 
using that flicking or dragging motion to pull down some of the pigment from the pomegranate to mix in with our magenta. So it's all nicely mixed and blended. And by the way, um, just going back to me being not very well, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's actually commented on my social media posts and things about it. Because I know I've been probably quite annoying, keep saying, what do I do about this? And my ears hurting, has anyone got any remedies and things like that? Um, and I don't want you to think I was sort of um, whining about it. But I've had so much support from people saying, you know, get well soon and we really miss you and... Um, you know giving me remedies as well to help me get better and it's just really shown it's shone a light on the community for me I knew you were all lovely anyway obviously but when you're going through something even though it's nothing major or serious you know it's nice to have that support around you that you would usually find in sort of very strong friendships which I don't have many of at all you know pretty much none <laughs> that don't occur with people online anyway so it was lovely actually just to feel you know people rallying around and yeah so I just want to say thank you for that while I've got the opportunity some people do put their noses up at online communities you know I get that I get how you know, some people feel that you should be out there more of a face-to-face a -face social life rather than one that's on a screen. But, you know, there's some of us, there's people like me who haven't got the luxury of a lot of friends, a lot of support, um, a lot of kind of real life um, people around us, if that makes sense. So these online communities, for me especially, they're just invaluable, really. And even though I don't post an awful lot, like I don't have a schedule of posting because I've got kids and other responsibilities, um, I really do. I read every single comment that comes in on my videos. I've Every single one. I've got an app, the YouTube Studio app, and it takes me to my comments and I look at it a few times a day and I always put a heart on your comments so that you know I've read it, um, if not a reply if you've asked me something. Um, so, you know, I'm not one of these that says that, oh, I really appreciate everyone and I'm not actually bothered. I really, really do. Like every single comment to me, it's a bit like kryptonite because it means, wow, people are watching, people are listening, people are happy with what I'm doing. It's like a validation. Um, and when you suffer with anxiety, you often think that you're kind of worthless and you don't have a lot of self-belief and self-worth so to have all these lovely comments come in it's it's wonderful it really really is and I can't express enough how a little insignificant thing called colouring has really and continues to help me in my life it really really does <clears throat> not gonna get emotional don't worry <laughs> the tablets I'm on don't let me <laughs> but um yeah, you've got, you've got to laugh, haven't you? Otherwise you'll cry. So coming in here again with the pomegranate. Now you can sort of draw a line here and give yourself a bit of um, a bit of a place to go, if you know what I mean. So you don't breach that line. You can do that and then flick it out from there. So you're not kind of going over into your next section. I am still... No, I'm not. It's a good job I checked, isn't it? Did you see the rest of it? Oh my goodness, you know what I'm like for doing this. So all I've done is just bring some pomegranate up, uh, up from here and down from here. Every single time I do a video, I colour along. I always go off camera. Um, then you've got the magenta. And the pink and the blush pink. I'm 
just going to go back in with that pomegranate and deepen up this area and then this area as well so it looks slightly crisper at the edges just bring some flicks up <clears throat> so we've got that sort of notion that there are individual strands of hair and then we can make a start on the other side so just sharpen it again just don't forget to keep your pencils nice and sharp throughout might actually do this bit as before we move on to this side I should have done that side first being right-handed but I always tend to do um, the right side first and then I end up smudging so I'll have to be careful but I am going to come um, and bring the page up a little because I've actually remembered to do it this time what's going on <laughs> and we're starting off with the pomegranate from the forehead and then flicking down so really important to have it nice and sharp and then just vary the length of your strokes as you move down this section so I've got a really kind of long stroke there and then comes quite short up here we've got our magenta so going again from the midpoint and then just lengthening it so you know that I'm not a layers person I do like to be quite heavy-handed with the pencils and get that maximum color on there as quick as I can that isn't everybody's style I understand that so if you just want to take these four colors that I've chosen and color the hair in your sort of own colouring way, please, please feel free to do that. You do not have to follow the kind of same pressure, etc., that I'm using. And then we've got our blush pink. Am I still on camera? Yes. We've got our blush pink, which is coming down into the very bottom of these strands and flicking outward. Don't worry about the gold earrings, I'm not. We'll sort that out when we get there. I'm going over the grey line of this. And this is why I like using the grey toned line art better because um, we can see our colours much more. Over the grey and then there's a few little strands that are just sneaking round the back around the side of her neck and make sure that you taper them off now we'll come back in <clears throat> and get darker this time so we're starting again from the bottom of the hair where we've got our very lightest color the blush pink and we're bringing some of the pink down a little bit further just to so that it's not a lot of, of blush pink on its own we want to try and Give that look that it's multicolored, multi-stranded, and there's a bit of different colors kind of coming in here. You know, one thing I've just noticed about this illustration is it looks incredibly like my best friend from high school. How weird! Really, honestly, the features are pretty much spot on. That is so freaky. She might even see this because she's uh, she's just started coloring herself. I think. So that'd be, that'd be weird. Um, and then next colour, which is the magenta, bringing some of those strokes down as well. Really helps that your pencil is sharp because those strands look very kind of, very individual when it's sharp. Bring a little bit there as well. And then of course if you need to you can bring that pomegranate back up and darken that a little bit so that's nice and burnished at the top there now and I might just darken this bit under here because it seems like this bit of hair is underneath 
the other section. So we'll darken that through. And we'll see what, oh there, that looks lovely. I'm just gonna bring a few strokes down here as well. Okay. So that is that side. Let's move on and do the other side and that will be this video complete. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pomegranate. Can't help but keep adding just a little bit there just to make that darker. Okay, moving across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of paper. So I've got a little notebook here. And I'm going to just cover this, what I've done, so that I don't end up smudging anything. So making sure we are in camera view again, because <laughs> that helps, doesn't it, when you're doing a colour along. Um, and then we can finish off this hair. And I've been going now for 46 minutes. Oh my goodness. I always worry about videos being too long, and then you guys always put my mind at rest saying, it's fine, we like long videos. <laughs> So don't worry too much about the hairline at the moment, just put in a few strokes to get you started and we'll look at that later. Really, you should do your skin first before you do your hair because you have to come up here with your skin colour and it can smudge. So maybe you want to do video two before you do video one, but it's a bit late now, isn't it, if you've started. So just be like me and just fly by the seat of your pants and go where it takes you. So just filling in this line at the top so that we know we can't go past it and into the flower. And then we are dragging, dragging our strokes. Making them a bit longer in some areas and shorter in others. And again, just bringing it up a little bit more in some areas. Then we're going in with our magenta extending it pink now and then blush pink to finish. And we can use that to blend some bits out as well. Coming back in with pomegranate to darken up the roots. And this bit here as well and also oh that went a bit awry bringing out some more strands so it looks a little bit more messy a bit more random okay I'm gonna do that here as well just make sure that that pencil is nice and sharp portion So if you have any questions for me or anything you want me to answer on the next part of the video, please leave your comments below. Uh, it'll give me something to talk about, if nothing else, if you want me to chat about anything in particular. Because I do often lose my words, as you'll know from my previous colour alongs. And um, I do like to have sort of topics that I can have on hand if I um, go a bit silent.
So after every sort of pomegranate magenta, pink, blush pink, I'll come back in with the pomegranate just to deepen up places. And that's the, that's the kind of routine that I'm using for this. It's looking good so far. Because I've done sort of two little twitchy lines that have come out, I might just put a few more of those in just to, so it looks like it's been done on purpose, you know? So it doesn't look like we've just made random lines. I think it looks pretty good. We can do that as well on the, the bun bit, but I'll do that in a minute because I know it's not on screen. <laughs> so again, coming up and flicking down, taking our line so we don't go past it and flicking down from the line. So if you did want to colour this in different colour hairs, um, Colour and Chat with Sammy, who I mentioned earlier, she is, or she's just completed, I think, a, a hair live stream series where she's coloured loads and loads of different colours of hair. And it's all live streams and it's all real time. So do check that out if you want to figure out how to colour different different colours of hair. I've had a lot of people asking me to do a very, you know, something similar, but I don't want to kind of step on her toes at the moment because the hair series is something that she's just been doing. So maybe, you know, in the future when I'm doing colour alongs or showing you how to colour hair, I will do different colours, but I'm not going to make a thing of it now because, you know, that's, that's um, what Sammy's doing at the moment. So if you do want to know how she's been doing it, pop over to her channel. She's absolutely amazing. She's one very, very talented lady and um, you won't go wrong with her really. She's incredible. <clears throat> okay, so I've just filled in a bit there with the pomegranate. Come back with the magenta. You can do this in any sort of way that you want. You can do the entire front section with the pomegranate and then go back in with the magenta, back in with the pink. Um, I like to work on little areas at once and then move on. So this bit is kind of curling around this way. So we have to adjust the direction of our strokes a little bit. Just use the pomegranate there to just redefine the edge of that section of hair because I went over the line a bit. Then our pink. I'm really aware that it sounds so loud doing this. So I hope it's not annoying. And then your final colour, which just smooths everything out and it looks a lot more kind of blurred and smoother and nicer. Give me some more adjectives. <laughs> when I was in school, they said, um, never ever call something nice or fine. You've got to, to uh, think of something better than that and too right to extend our vocabularies a little bit. <laughs> Speaking of school, my eldest. Shane, he's uh, looking to take his options at the moment, which for you American viewers, uh, when they reach a certain age in um, high school, they have to choose what subjects they want to take going forward for the last sort of half of high school. So they, they are required and obligated to take English, maths and science, and also one language and one humanity subject, which is either geography or history. So Shane is thinking of choosing uh, German for his language. They only have French or German to choose from. And uh, history for his humanity subject. And then obviously English, maths and science. And then they have to choose two others from a, from a list. Um, purely, you know, whatever they want to do. So um, 
he's thinking of choosing drama because he's always, always been into drama. And also this uh, subject that I've never heard of before called um, IT media or iMedia or something. And it's basically if you want to learn how to do Photoshop and um, game design, video game design, um, scripts and storyboards. It's a bit like media studies. And that'd be really good for him because he's really interested in all that. There was one time when he wanted to be an actor and he did um, go to a an acting school for a couple of years. He had a scholarship to go there and uh, it was amazing. He performed on the West End stage. It was incredible. I don't think he wants to do that anymore, unfortunately. Um, but... I think he still would like to work within that kind of realm of things, within the media. So I'm just bringing in the pomegranate here on this very small section. Front and back, top and bottom. I'm extending it with the magenta a little. Using very, very, very small strokes so that we fit it all in. And back with the pomegranate to deepen up those areas. I'm going to finish these uh, little bits here before I go on to the long strand. Now this bit here, I might just box that in because it's it's very very small and very in shadow. So I'm just going to box that bit in, and then we can continue what we're doing with this bit. So yeah, it's very, very odd that my son's choosing his options right now because it doesn't feel like two minutes ago since I was doing it. I mean, there's only 17 years between us, me and my eldest. So it really doesn't feel like that long. And it's scary. It really is scary. Um, you know, he won't thank me for telling you, but he's at that age now where he's, he's just changing so much. You know, he's gone from a baby to, you know, a young man. And it is so, so scary. Um, scary because it seems like so long ago that he was a baby but at the same time it's gone so fast it's so hard to describe if you've got kids you'll know exactly what I mean but you know it's just it's it's just crazy it's crazy it, it felt like the longest time when they're little you know it felt like you had all the time in the world and then suddenly, you know, they're, they're young men and they're, they're growing moustaches. and <laughs> It's crazy. It's really crazy. But he makes me proud. Both of my boys make me immensely proud every single day to be their mum. You know, even though I do have my struggles, like everyone, um, and especially, you know, having, an, having a child with autism, it's not easy. But I just, I would not change either of them for the world. They're amazing young men amazing you know I feel so so lucky that I'm their mum really really do and I am that embarrassing parent that goes to every single thing every single school function and assembly and everything and I stand there doing the doing the whistle and like yeah clapping and embarrassing the hell out of them but honestly that's just the way that's the way it has to be because I just want them to know and I want them to remember how supported they were and um, yeah so there's my little gush about my boys so now that we've sort of done this bit I might just put a little bit more blush pink just very very light touch over that white so I'm not decimating the white completely but I am smoothing it a little bit and then just bring in some more pomegranate strokes here. Um, we'll move on to this last bit, which is the long section here. So making sure that my camera doesn't decide to go out of focus. And then going back in with the pomegranate. So I'm going to sharpen it. I think that might be why it looks a little bit blunted around here. And then we started off the pomegranate already going to bring it round and then I'm going to bring it down here as well because it looks like this section overlaps this section so bringing it down and 
and also bringing it down here because we've got a third little wisp that has started and we've also got a few little bits just tucking from behind here as well and then next is the magenta being careful not to add too much onto those little bits that are forming around her face and then it's the pink I have to keep reminding myself never mind you <laughs> what colors are coming next and the blush pink So try and taper your strokes at the very end as much as you can. So we don't want any thick bits at the end, we want nice and tapered and thin. And then you can just blend it a little with that pink so it's not as harsh. So again you can come from the top with the pomegranate and bring some strokes. So it looks a little bit, I was going to say hairy, but that's not a good word, is it? So it looks kind of individual strands. just finish off this bit here that I've not continued so in with the pink and the blush pink okay so majority of the hair is done well all of the hair is done but we just need to uh, have a check over it so I'm gonna pull it back up Let's have another look at the top of this and just see if there's anything we want to change. I'm not sure whether this is meant to be filled in. It looks a little odd, so I might just fill it in. It's up to you if you want to do that, but I'm going to. So I've filled that in. And then let's just take a quick look at this bun. Make sure that we've got some nice strokes with the pomegranate showing our individual hairs. Nice and random. Mm, yeah, happy with that. This little bit here needs a few random hairs. That bit's okay. Moving up to this whole section here. I'm not too pleased with how these ones are looking. They don't have too much shine. They look a little bit What's the opposite of shine? Dull. They look a bit dull. <clears throat> and I'm just going to make sure that this bit here is nice and rounded. It's not because it looks a little bit out of shape. I want it to be a nice curve. And just make sure that this is as well. I'm getting bits of pigment everywhere. I do have a dust brush, but it's it's gone walkabout since I've moved. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest, guys. Let's zoom out and you can see what you think. So there we go. This is our zoomed out piece that we have completed so far. We've done our lovely bubblegum pink I don't know if I'd call it bubblegum pink actually, it's a bit darker than bubblegum pink. Um, I did say that I was going to maybe put some black in there, just in the very, um, you know, the very 
inner shadows but I'm not really sure that I want to do that actually so I might just leave it for now maybe we'll come in with a bit of indigo blue on the next stream before we start the skin not sure but just to finish off we're going to make sure that these eyebrows are done because the eyebrows should be the same color as the hair so pomegranate and then using the darkest color just taper around now if you do do this step at this point you will have to be very careful when you do the skin which I've just reminded myself of um, but you know if you're confident that you can you can do it then fair play I don't know if I'll be able to do it without smudging any of the red but we will see so I'm just using very tiny little strokes to do the eyebrow and yeah I think that's it trying to make them both look the same but your eyebrows should be sisters not twins isn't that what they say <laughs> okay so there we are you finished the hair if you want to go in with a little bit of indigo blue um, feel free to do that I'm not sure if I want to do that on mine I might try a little tiny bit see what it looks like yeah you know you could indigo blue is a really different um, a good alternative to black so if you want to just go in in the very very you know very dark bits with some indigo blue and just very lightly do that then it will just deepen up that pomegranate a little bit but you know what it's not essential that you do that step it's totally up to you I'm actually liking how that's looking let's just I know I said it's finished but let's just <laughs> let's just do a little bit of this before we go so a bit of indigo blue nice and sharp taking up from the very darkest areas just give a bit of depth gives a bit of dimension to have that darker color on there as well taking it into this area being very light though my own camera yes being very light with it Yeah, I like that. Probably going slightly too heavy, really, but you only live once. I keep saying go light with things, but me, myself, I just have this terrible time adjusting pressure. Everything has to be heavy. So I need to scale that back a little bit. went a little out of the lines there so we don't want any blue on its own so I'll just fill that over with the pomegranate bring some here a little bit under here a little bit under here still on camera I think so <laughs> and then a little tiny tiny bit on these here and then of course we can't forget our bun so we've got this strand do a little bit there do a bit up here very very quick very random just keep it to the darker areas look how dark I've gone there keep it to the darker areas and keep that pressure light <laughs> I'm telling myself that is really quite dark there what I've just done let's see if I can just pomegranate out a bit there we go it's not so harsh now a little bit around here on the top of the bun I 
any areas you go over just use your pomegranate to cover it there we go yeah I'm quite glad that I put that bit of indigo blue in actually it seems to have given it a little bit more depth so just be careful when you're doing it that you don't go too heavy like me and you'll be fine but really it's up to you to stand back and have a look at your finished piece or you know so far and see if you do want to add any more bits and where and how and why so just giving it a finished kind of finished kind of glance and stop working on it Claire stop touching it it's fine and there we go okay I'm putting the pencil down so there we are we finished our hair and on the next one we will be doing the skin and then the rest of it on another video so I really hope that you have enjoyed it she's so so pretty and don't forget the uh, link will be in the description for you to go and buy your copy if you want to do this with me please do it with me <laughs> okay so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time